data processing. All right. So we've got all this data. We understand the importance and the value of it. So how do we process it? And what are the components to really monetizing data? It's big, uh, big industry out there. Well, let's start with data mining. What is this? It's really just the process of sorting through it to discover previously unknown information. It's just filtering, sorting through. You got to think like a gold mine. You're filtering through it, trying to find the gold in there. And that's quite literally what you're doing. Data mining is the process of finding anomalies, patterns, correlations. Oh, I'm going to search all your data. Oh, it looks like you met a fraud. Oh, pay me because I found your fraud. Or, oh, it looks like your company's not doing well because I found that your costs are too high. So pay me because I found that uh, issue in your company. Right. So we can use this to predict outcomes. The more data you have, the more accurate your predictions can be. I mean, heck, I can even talk about this site. The more data we have, the more accurate your, the predictions on your score can be for how likely you are to pass this exam. I mean, early on with the site with less users, it's a little bit more difficult. But as we gain more and more users, I mean, it just gets more and more accurate. So some little peer pressure to get your friends to join up on the site. No, I just want more people to talk to. <laughs> All right. Using a broad range of techniques, you can use this information to increase revenues, costs, improve customer relationships, reduce risks, and more. Options are endless. Data mining can also be referred to as data analytics, and it assists managers in making decisions and strategic plans. All fair points. Get a good understanding of what data mining is. We also have data warehouse. What's a data warehouse? Well, it's just a storage center, essentially just like a normal warehouse. It's specifically designed for data analytics, which involves reading large amounts of data to understand relationships and trends across the data. Store it here, and this is where it's actually processed. This is a process. This is a location, right? Probably a massive server. Uh, think of just a massive hard drive where all the data is kept and it's sorted through there. Yes, it's going to incorporate likely data processing systems. It's not just the physical where it's stored. It's also how do we enter the data warehouse? Oh, through a software in which we can manipulate the data and read it. Next, what is real-time processing? And I mean, you might think these are kind of jumping all over the place. But, I mean, they're not really jumping all over the place by any means, but this is real, just cut from exactly what you need to know for the exam. It's just, hey, if there was a, a more points to see, but it's really not worth your time, well, then I'm not going to put it here and just make your time more efficient, right? Let's get you to do the things that you want to do, which is probably not study for this exam. So real-time processing is the execution of data in a short time period, providing near instantaneous output, right? Real-time processing. So an example of that would be, let's say you're Walmart. I mean, think about the high volume there. Walmart quite literally, yes, is the probably the most... Uh, or, I mean, Amazon, any of them, they all use real-time processing because they want to know, okay, this person scanned the last one. Now we have one in stock. Oh, the, this other person scanned the last one. We have zero in stock. Okay, we have no more left, so no one else can buy them. So real-time processing, super important. Let's think about like rush hour, you have everyone, their mother in the store trying to buy everything. So knowing when things are in stock, when you need to restock, super important for data processing. What is system documentation? All right, well, this includes things like source code, testing documentation, and API documentation. Oh, we'll see API, which is just programmer's documentation or instructions. So it's just in a file. It tells you how to run the program or write some notes on the system. It describes the requirements and capabilities of software. So it says, hey, you have to have uh, you know, Microsoft version 15 or something such as that. Uh, it informs the reader about what the software can and can't do. In other words, it's functionality. So system documentation, just the instruction manual, nothing too crazy there. Now, API, there's a lot about this. Is there a special point we can get to that is just for what you need to know for the exam? Yes, and that's exactly what I'm going to hit on. So it's a set of, well, first off, it's application programming interface. It's a set of definitions and protocols for building and integrating application software. An API delivers a user response to a system and sends the system's response back to a user. So take this last part with a grain of salt, the, the user point, it's not as critical. Um, and I'll give you an example of API. It's really just communications between two parties. So uh, 
For example, if your company has software that needs real-time information on stock prices, it's usually going to retrieve data from an API that feeds it directly into your software. So no humans are needed to be a bottleneck, right? Like I could create an API if I wanted, let's say, pretend this is my desktop over here. I always wanted this to update with the current price of Coca-Cola stock. I could create an API that pulls it from dividends.com or something, right? Nasdaq.com. And it, it pulls it right here and it'll always pop up there. This is very much a uh, how you pull out of your cryptocurrency information. There's APIs for getting weather, air quality levels, lots of components such as those. Um, yeah, just communication between systems. When you all sign up for this course, when you sign up for uh, everything we've got here, there are APIs that communicate with every party involved, right? If you uh, pay through credit card, right? If you, uh, I don't think we accept check and then not as far as I know. Um, so, right. Uh, if everything that communicates with your computer, it's just a communications process. It's, it's how computers talk. Data backup. Well, we've got all our data. It's super valuable. We're going to monetize it and keep it secure, process it. We're going to analyze it. We back it up. That's super important. If it just whoop, disappears, sorry, no more fun time. You are now looked upon quite poorly. People don't trust you. Oh boy, someone doesn't back up the system and <laughs> one of my good friends, yeah, deletes the whole system. And, you know, we were just starting out associates and oh boy, no one's happy. How could we have avoid this? We can every day do a full backup. A full backup requires a full backup of all available data, regardless of whether or not it was saved before. So a full backup, you know, what's the downside here? It's, it's kind of timely because you have to back up absolutely everything every day or whenever you want, every minute, every hour. And it's going to back everything. It's going to duplicate everything all over again. So it's a lot of storage. It's a lot of time. However, it's nice because you know you have everything. I mean, back in the, the old days of what, like 10 years ago before, like Google Drive and all that was such a thing. I mean, I remember back at my computer, back, you know, your phone, remember how much of a hassle that was, making sure that you didn't lose your contacts and pictures. Now, an incremental backup, this is a type of backup that relates to copying data items that have been altered since the previous data backup. This one, what's the advantages here? Well, it sounds pretty nice. I mean, you don't have to back up everything. You don't have to duplicate everything. It's going to take less time, less storage space, um, saves time by not having to duplicate data. Well, backup would duplicate all saved data. Yes, this is you know probably a lot more secure. Like you don't have to think about it. You know you have everything all over again. But you know, you see the pros and cons here. It's it's nice because you just have one copy of all at all. But if something happens to it, that would not be good at all. A note on counting systems data backup. This is a point that is actually brought up a decent amount. So it's my job to bring it to your attention. The accounting system data backup, so just backing up the accounting system data, it's all of our accounting system, I guess it's the AICPA, it's the accounting exam. We, we got to make a specific point about this. Of year end information should be stored in some kind of secure offsite location. Why is that so critically important that I need to bring it to your attention? If you work for the AICPA, maybe you could tell me. Although, if you do work for the AICPA, I don't know. I think you probably, I don't know. Do they make you pass the exam before you get a job there? I don't know. Someone tell me. So that is a note there. Um, lastly, we've got our split mirror backup. So this is used when a firm has a large amount of data. It uses a remote server to back up large amounts of data offline that can be restored in the event of a disaster. But just understand what a split mirror backup is. You see how it kind of relates to a disaster recovery system, which we'll see later in another lesson with IT. Just different types of backups, all important for us here. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. 
Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.